Hi, thank you guys. Um, my name is Keisha. Um, as you can see, I gave you guys each a boat, and on there is my process of my study. So the book there is my approach to my research. So I'll start with this. The stream of warmth harshly sitting against her skin formed a shadow on her hairy lids. The mapping of broken canvas scattered the ground, covering the direct path of knowing. Droplets softening to kiss the open floor, melting, icy floors scatter along my feet. Walking, I'm cracking the surface of a chilly oasis. I see what you are. I step from lily pad to lily pad. I treat every step with care to prevent a bomb from erupting beneath. Shift, shift. Boom, resilient, yet restless. And there I lay, and lifting my gaze to the sky, and a small gesture in the pan of openness, start stillness. The language I hear, the sharpness of tapping rendered repetitively, the hum of the hard drive, the sketching of lead shedding its weight, penetrating as it expands, softened by the gentleness of the tension of your grip, the dominant stare of a black feathered magpie on the edges of my fence the soft ears of a cat carefully placing its paw, the watchfulness of a deer dashing in the shadows. I wait a moment for transformation, feeling my limbs try to unfold and slay to reveal itself. My contours fold once more, shift, shift. I soak up the weight of its shape resting in my hands. The puddles of white evaporate into thin air. Briskly spreading my toes along white shells that litter the edges of a lone tree. As I await a hand, I breathe in a rush of coldness to breathe again. Repeat, shift, shift. My research explores three main ideas, scenography, objects, and relationships. As a choreographer, I have used paper because it relates to my careers about the choreographic process and new ways of generating innovative movement with a body and an object. And also the idea of movement-initiated writing. So as you can see, that's how I've approached my practice-led research. One practitioner that I have stemmed my ideas from is William Forsyth. He is a choreographer for Frankfurt Ballet. He was a choreographer who recognised visual arts and displaying theatre beyond its means and created new ways of knowing and new ways of perceiving a performance. In one of his works named Artifacts, he lifted the curtains up and down, 
trying to get the environment to change and get the audience to see a dance beyond what the conventional means of what it is. One thing I'll be talking about since it's a sh such a short presentation is sonography. Sonography is mentioned in many forms, in many um, fields, and there are diverse meanings. For one, in theatre, it is a lexicon of theatre making, but in a dance context, it is shifting the perception of body, space, and time, and igniting space. So for me, my piece is named Soma. I try to change and shift the ideas of the conventional means or use of paper. And for me, as I stemmed from this query, it interested me in learning to view objects in dance beyond conventional means. For instance, looking at a teacup beyond simply just holding tea. I shift my ideas from two novelists, Gabriel Marquez. He was a Colombian novelist who wrote the book 100 Years of Solitude. The book is based on gypsies and enlightened the natives of a small town, Macando. It was about the importance of one thing, that things have a life of their own, and it's simply of a matter of waking up their souls. It then led me to question about a book named All Things in Animal, Vegetable and Mineral. It was a story about Iceland and the nature of that. There was a character named Greta, and she journeyed the lands, and she said this, Things, especially things that appear to hold themselves in silence, must possess a power indifferent to language, something that comes from themselves, not via human allowance. Silent things must be able to speak, exert agency, propel narrative. In the context of sonography in my research, one could say the way that Cohen describes the objects are powerful things that are not empowered by the activation of humans, but simply possess the power within themselves. And that is what I'm looking at in my research. If we go to dance theorists, there are two, named Miranda Tufnell and Chris Crackney. Miranda is a dancer and also a craniosacral therapist. She's based on sensing the body and the practice of that. Chris is a, a practitioner who works with visual arts and dance. These two say that shaping and reshaping the landscape is an integral part of improvisation. People act upon their world and are acted upon by a, co by a consistent dialogue. As you can see, the paper will never be in the exact same place every single time. This dance is never performed the exact same time. But the question is, how do you engage yourself in a space when it is new, it is ignited, and when there's a new, new audience perceiving what you are doing? Um, and that is my research. Thank you. I guess I'm uh, first. Uh, so thank you very much for, for, for that performance. Um, so I, I, I was really intrigued by your kind of relationship with paper in the sense that yeah, from as an academic who in the social sciences, paper is something that I write on, it's something I project my ideas onto. So it's kind of the, the vehicle which carries my ideas. It's not something that I would kind of use in such a kind of creative way. So that was kind of really an interesting uh, yeah, shift in perspective for me. Um, I, I had a question about the choreography, in particular kind of your emphasis on origami, because on the one hand it does have that mobility, that fluidity, when you look at the kind of the finished uh, you know, piece of origami, it, yeah, they usually have these beautiful lines, but it's also a very de delicate and deliberate and intentional practice, very kind of precise. And I'm curious um, how, when you were kind of choreographing this piece, how you managed to kind of get that balance between both the fluidity, but also the very kind of jerky body movements that kind of hint, I think, at some of that um, intentionality. I think paper is a very dense um, material, and I think I was trying to balance it out with the human body and the tactile cues you can use to enable that idea of when a paper is folded, it's crinkled, and when it's straightened, it's fluid those kind of feelings I wanted to evoke through the movement and the relationship within that, if that asked, answers your question. <laughs> okay, so, um, Keisha, my, my question actually kind of builds on that. So I noticed during the performance there were phases where the dancers were intertwined and there were phases mm -hmm. when they were completely separated. I was wondering what were the ideas and themes that were driving this fusion and expansion or separation? 
So I use two stems, so they're a journey, so they all have individual journeys, as we all do, and they come together and they write, they write a part of their journey when they communicate through dancing, and when they leave each other, they obviously are affected by that in some way, shape or form, as we all are. If we have a conversation with someone, we'll remember it. That's kind of how I've used that and to translate it in the dance, if that helps. So it's more of a journey, if anything else. Is there a reason why you chose to use the boat as your sort of tool? Um, well, the hues of the colour of paper represents a journey of sea. Um, initially, because we don't have a lot of time, I set out the place as landmines. So the paper represents land and the space within that is the water. So the boats represent a journey and how they carry themselves. Yeah. For, for quite a time, um, people have used paper to, to hold ideas and, and to create structures such as origami. Do you think that that's going to change much when we start moving into the digital world? How does that sort of affect your mindset? I think that's a lot of the reason why I am doing this and there's this research through dance because we often video dance and we don't actually perceive the meaning and emotion of that and I think if you are able to write it in paper you can actually perceive what someone's feeling but digitally I don't think you can get as much of it so that's what my research is trying to promote because you don't feel the experience and dance is an experience. Yeah, so I do think it will change. So do you think we'd lose a bit of sort of personal connection by m migrating to digital media? Yes, I do. I do actually think that it promotes dance in a very great way, but you don't see behind the scenes and what people actually feel when they create something. And I think that's in a very important part of art. <laughs>